This is the action tonight of fog migrating down from the fjord. These hours are evening conditions, August 13th, after a storm of two days. And then the wind is now coming around from the fairweather direction, which is north. This is a little cabin, Norwegian outpost. And it's fascinating to see the clouds and how they are layered. Here is just what it looked like when we were on the water. Actually, it's the only photograph I ever took, these couple of photographs. I was in the stern of the Arius II Klepper that I brought. This is the hut built in the 30s, and out in front is a muskox skull, one of the many skulls around, because in 1976 the eating was so poor that many of the muskox simply starved to death. Here's a group of brilliant colored rocks, and I was especially fascinated with the brilliant hematite and the contrast of sedimentary. Here is a conglomerate pebble with hematite, and below it is a sedimentary rock. Just amazing contrasts I found here. We happened to be camping on the edge of Eleanor Bay, and this was what it looked like through my still camera. We had both wind, fog, and snow in the higher elevations, and when the sun came out, all was glorious. There was some snow last night that covered these mountains halfway. I found it fascinating to look at the foreground, which has a group of eiders, and the iceberg, which is probably multi-year ice, the clouds between the mountains. This is the general paddling route. We were on Andes land, on the mainland of Greenland, and this is a geological map showing all of the various sediments in the area. We were definitely in a sedimentary geological area, which was fascinating to see. The mountains are at least a thousand feet high. Conditions have improved since yesterday. And it's a wonderful place for wildlife. The family of Eider. Two mothers with about six ducklings. This is a glacier up in this valley, which we can just see now through the clouds. It's incredible to think of how much ice is sitting up there. What is particularly interesting in this area are these high, very high contrast rocks, which are metamorphosed sediments. So you have an injection of silica minerals into some form of sedimentary rock. Probably it's metamorphosed to a nice. Here's another interesting example of metamorphism. Here is a sandstone, multi-layered, almost turned into a shale. Here's another very pretty example of a red sandstone. Here is a very unusual stone. Here is a group photographs of the various lichens I found on the rocks here. I used a high magnifying lens to capture them in such detail. Their colors are amazing. 
Oh, we are on a deep land now. that is on the mainland of Greenland. It's amazing to think how much snow is bound up in that piece of ice. This is now we have crossed over and we are on Euler's Island. We're watching a group of narwhal They're coming up. The fjord, 73 degrees north. Every once in a while they swim with their uh, tusk out. We are very lucky. Yeah. Who has really seen a walrus? Loons. Yeah, red breasted loons. So nice to see a pair of them. Red breasted loons. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. This was our paddling route. We had crossed over from Jameson Land to Humers Island. Humers Island has all sorts of sediments and we were standing on a pebbly beach. We had just crossed over from Andes Land when we stopped and got out on Narwhal Point of all places at about 11 o'clock in the morning. And just as we were there, the Narwhal came by. We've our geological scenery. So. And we just watched a whale. Just so you can see what we have for topography here. Hey, I did a lousy job getting pictures of that. I couldn't get more uh, just uh, did I had all kinds of problems. Well it, it wasn't like it was right next to us. This was the landscape just behind us as we were standing on the point and then we came across flowers such as this one and this red berry and this was what we saw across from where we were standing. This is our panorama for this afternoon. We're at Flowers Bay. Flowers Bay translates in Danish to Blomster Boo. On the 15th of August. I took this fabulous photograph quite late in the afternoon. And this was a daily event with the fog blowing in. This is the action tonight. A fog migrating down from the fjord, which is north. And is coming in from the marine world. It's just generally filling in here, and we're in a little microclimate where I'm standing, so the fog is not coming into this area. However, it's going around and out again. And where we are, it's a warm place with a great variety of plants. I had just the grandest time taking pictures of flowers. Here is a ranuncula or buttercup. Here is a cerastrium. And next is a tiny little drabia. It's in the mustard family. And very good soil with ambient sediments. Very nice. Just to my left here, it's a lovely example of some marble. Quite pretty. And here is full circle, the fog blowing down. This is just to show you some of the strata we've been paddling along. Um, now it looks like from above. Let's so see, kind of get a feeling for our present paddling. We will be moving down into a different geological area in a few days. But for now, this is part of what we have for our area. It's quite exciting to look at. If you look slowly, you'll see that this iceberg is rolling. A few minutes ago, some large chunks of ice fell off it. 
and has changed its uh, center of gravity a little bit. It's rolling towards us very slowly. Now it's reversing its roll, and we want to look to the right. It's an interesting sedimentary seam. Probably has some low-grade coal in the areas that are dark. Now going back to our iceberg. The whole thing is slowly revolving. Now it's revolving towards us. Okay, the front edge is dipping gradually. This is a bumblebee. The reason why you can find bumblebees in the Arctic is because they are the only bee that is capable of warming their flight muscles, which allows them to be functional in the Arctic while all the other bees cannot do this. This bumblebee is just too cold to fly this morning. I'm going to give you a panorama shot looking down the Valley of Flowers from about in eastern Greenland here, 73 degrees north, so you can get a feeling of the geology. Now at my feet are shale and marble sediments. It's a very lovely place with lots of flowers that really grow quite a bit south of here are growing because it's a microclimate. Now I'm a little further up and I'm scanning the horizon and here in a little closer detail is a lone musk ox. I'm not too sure but I think it is. A female I had the creepy crawly feeling this was not a good situation and I found out later it was a male. This time of year bull moss are always alone. He is looking at me and I am looking at him. Not good. See those horns? They are like stilettos. He cannot see that well, but he sure can smell and hear very well. The animal is approaching me because it can't smell me. I am upwind of it. I think it's a lone male. And we are now starting rutting season. So this is not the best situation for me to be in. Now, quick as a wink, the muskox went one way, I went the other way, I went around up here, and uh, so did the muskox. I heard a little clatter on the shale. I turned around and came back down again because muskox is on its way up the hill, and I shall go down the hill. Now we can look out at this expanse to the area we're going to paddle into in the next several days. The average altitude here is uh, 1,000 feet. Now going from this geology here, I'll show you something kind of curious. It's an area filled with ancient ripple marks. And far off in the distance, there's a very colorful display of sedimentary oxides of iron, the coal and other compounds, such as calcium. Beneath these protected cliffs you can find these ferns, Chrysopterus fragilis, and there's also a woodwardia that grows in these areas. The stone above is quartzite. However, 
other stone in the area that's white is marble. And below it is some metamorphosed sediments here. And in the middle of the picture is a very tiny example of a wood warrior galebra, which also must grow in uh, protected areas. The late season bumblebee in the blueberry patch. Some blue flowers to enjoy. Campanules. Now, uh, looking at something that shows that people have been here in the past. This can be people were last seen here 150 years ago and then they disappeared. Tent ring in the foreground. Just below it is a second tent ring. And in the area, as Near the tent ring is also some pieces of stone that people had been trying to shape them into projectile points. Very hard flint material that breaks with extremely sharp edges. This could have been an old coastline at this altitude. Uh, we're about uh, 30 feet above the coast. We have come down the hill and uh, here's a very lovely calcium combination. Calcium with, I don't know what it is, it makes it this green color. And it's particularly lovely to look at. We've dropped down about 50 feet from the tent circles we were just looking at a moment ago. There's also rocks with mang manganese in them that are a pinkish purple color. Among these rocks is a large population of these ferns and I thought I would share them with you. It's amazing how many like to grow here and it's very common to find them close to rock faces and within rocks. These are chrysosphorus fragrants. You can see there's some within here. There's chrysosphorus and there's some right here. There's also a little woodwardia that is growing here too, it's very small. And uh, right next to the Chrysophorus is our little tiny woodwardia. There they are. Now those are Chrysophorus. The woodwardias are right here. And they're about uh, three to four inches tall. That's all they are. Very small, but they're definitely right here. This evening, August 17th, 1993, from our campsite here in Northeast Greenland, we are prepared for a nice risk, and it's about 9.30. And this is what it looks like. The geology here ranges from sedimentary rocks to igneous rocks to reworked sedimentary sediments. It generates an incredible array of geological specimens to look at and an array of compounds in this area. I'll show you a very Using iceberg. He looks like a bunch of castle towers just sitting there. We are having a little light surf, and our icebergs are breaking up here and there. What a fascinating adventure we got to have in King Oscar Fjord.